In this lecture, we're going to look at the preparation and physical properties of alcohols. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to recall the methods of preparing alcohols from alkenes, carbohydrates, haloalkanes and carbonyl compounds. You should also be able to explain the solubility and boiling point of alcohols in terms of intermolecular bonding. So far, in section 2.4, we've now covered the introduction, the alkenes and the haloalkanes. Certainly the alkenes and the haloalkanes are by far and away the two biggest sections. They get a bit smaller from here on in. And 2.4d is going to be on alcohols. So let's start by looking at how we actually make alcohols. And there's several different ways most of which we've already come, come across, so it's just a matter of reminding you. Right, the first way we came across making alcohols was way back in National 5, and that was by the fermentation of carbohydrates. So, for example, this would be a monosaccharide, maybe glucose, and uh, with the addition of a uh, yeast, which provides a catalyst, you get fermentation to produce alcohol. Okay. Of course, by fermentation of carbohydrates, you're limited to making ethanol. That's the only alcohol you can make by this process. You can make alcohols by the substitution of haloalkanes, as we just shot, saw in the previous section. So here's our haloalkane, carry out a nucleophilic substitution reaction. The nucleophile in this case is a hydroxide ion, a place the bromine with a hydroxide group and the conditions for this are be the hydroxide ion would be provided by either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide dissolved in water okay remember if it's dissolved in ethanol you'd get an elimination reaction and you wouldn't get an alcohol so potassium or sodium hydroxide dissolved in water Another way that we came across in the alkene section was the hydration of alkenes. And in fact, this is actually probably the most common industrial method for making alcohols, uh, other than perhaps fermentation for making ethanol, but for making the other alcohols, this is the most common industrial method. So we get an alkene, which we've got from the cracking of crude oil. Uh, the acid uh, catalyzed addition of water. So you break the double bond and add an H to one carbon and an OH to another carbon. And it would, of course, follow Markovnikov's rule. This is a symmetric alkene, so it doesn't matter what way around you do it, you get the same product, ethanol in this case. And remember, you already know the reaction mechanism for this reaction. Uh, it proceeds via the carbocation and as I said the addition of the H and the OH would follow Markovnikov's rule with the H going on to the carbon that already had the greatest number of hydrogens and the OH going on the other one. Right. The one method that is going to be new to you is the reduction of carbonyl compounds. We've come across this idea before. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if we've got an aldehyde, in this case ethanol, and instead of if we oxidise that, we get ethanoic acid, but if we reduced it, we go back to the alcohol, which is ethanol. Over the next few sections, we'll come across this reducing agent an awful lot. It's the reducing agent of choice in organic chemistry. It's lithium aluminium, aluminium hydride. And similarly, if you've got a ketone, propanone in this case, use lithium aluminium hydride, you reduce it to the secondary alcohol, propanol. So reduction reactions in organic chemistry usually involve removing oxygen or adding hydrogen. In both these cases, we're adding hydrogen. So if you remember, the lithium aluminium hydride 
it's LIALH4. It's got lots of hydrogens that it can donate. So there are the four ways you should know that different routes we can take to make an alcohol. I now want to look at the physical properties of the alcohol. Yeah. Now, the main thing that drives the physical properties of the alcohols, I hear really talk about solubility and boiling points, is the presence of hydrogen bonding. So, the OH bond is very polar with uh, H positive and O minus and we get a hydrogen bond between the oxygen of one alcohol and the hydrogen on the OH group of another alcohol. So we get this strong intermolecular force which means that uh, compared with other organic materials of similar mass which don't possess hydrogen bonding the alcohol will have a higher melting and boiling point. So they have higher melting and boiling points than other organic molecules of similar mass. And again, because of the polarity of the OH bond, eh, the small alcohols can be soluble, are very soluble in water. Okay, so small chain alcohols are soluble in water. As you know, ethanol is soluble in water. Eh, if a glass of wine is not two layers one being the water, one being the alcohol, they mix together and that's because the polarity of the hydroxide group uh, allows it to dissolve in the polar water solvent. As you get bigger and bigger alcohols, uh, so you get this a longer and longer covalent part to the molecule, uh, then the polar, the the solubility in water will decrease. So large alcohols tend not to be soluble in water, whereas the small ones are. So by now you should be able to recall the methods of preparing alcohols from alkenes, carbohydrates, haloalkanes and carbonyl compounds. You should also be able to explain the solubility and boiling point of alcohols in terms of intermolecular bonding.